Welcome to the first part of the module on Java concurrency mechanisms. In this part, we present an overview of the Java mechanisms available in Android to implement concurrent software via multi-threading. Android supports many standard Java concurrency and synchronization mechanisms. We cover Java threads in the first several parts of this module, and then cover the core Java synchronization mechanisms in the later parts. If you're already familiar with Java threading, you can skim through this video or skip it altogether. There are several ways to understand Java threads. First, there's a conceptual view, where Java threads are units of computation that could run simultaneously within a process, which is ultimately a Linux process on Android. These threads can communicate with each other via shared objects or message passing. Second, there's an implementation view, where each Java thread has a stack, a program counter, and other registers, which comprise state that's unique to each thread, as well as heap and static areas, which comprise state that's shared by all threads within a process. Now that I've given a brief overview of Java threads, let's show how to program threads in Android. All Java threads must be given some code to run, which is typically done in one of two ways. One way is to extend the thread class and override its run hook method, as shown in the code snippet on this slide, where myThread inherits from thread and defines a run method that's invoked automatically when myThread is started. Another way is to implement the runnable interface and override its run hook method. There are several ways to implement the runnable interface. The approach shown on this slide defines a named runnable implementation, passes it to an anonymous thread object, then calls its start method, which instructs the Java virtual machine to create the resources needed to run the thread and invokes its run hook method. Alternatively, the approach shown on this slide defines and starts a thread using an anonymous inner class as the runnable, which is a common idiom used throughout Android. This link compares and contrasts these various approaches. Regardless of how a thread is created, the Java virtual machine, known as Dalvik on Android, creates the thread's resources and invokes its run hook method when another thread calls start on the thread instance. That run method can execute concurrently with respect to other computations and other threads. It can call blocking I.O. operations on network connections and files, receive messages from a looper and process them, etc. You can generally run any code in a thread, though Android restricts GUI operations to the user interface thread. A thread can execute as long as its run hook method hasn't returned, though the Android Linux thread scheduler can transparently suspend and resume a thread many times throughout its life cycle. If a thread needs to run forever, it requires some sort of infinite loop that prevents run from returning. After the run hook method returns, the thread is no longer active, and various things can happen. For example, another thread might have called the thread's join method to wait for it to complete, or the thread could simply evaporate. The Java virtual machine reclaims and recycles a thread's resources once it's complete, while allowing other threads in the program to continue running. The Java thread class has dozens of methods that are documented in this link. We've covered some of the most important methods already. For example, the start method initiates thread execution, join waits for a thread to finish, and run is a hook method that executes user code. Some other methods commonly used in Android software and shown later in this MOOC include sleep, which causes a thread to sleep for a given period of time, interrupt, which posts an interrupt request to a thread indicating that it should shut itself down voluntarily, and current thread, which returns the thread object associated with the currently executing thread of control. In summary, some concurrency mechanisms supported by Android are based on standard Java threading classes, which provide a programming model that's familiar to many developers. This link points to a tutorial on the concurrency support provided by the Java programming language and its class libraries. Android also supports powerful concurrency mechanisms from the Java Util concurrent package documented at this link. For example, its thread pool executor and future are used in various parts of the Android middleware itself. Writing Android programs using Java threads has drawbacks, however, since it's subtly different than writing multi-threaded Java programs in other environments. For example, Android doesn't allow background Java threads to access the display, but instead requires them to post runnables or messages to the user interface threads looper. In practice, therefore, many Android applications use the idiomatic concurrency frameworks that are described in this link and covered in the next module in this section. <laughs>